Welcome back to the Wardcast, guys. Hope you're all doing well out there. I'm your host, Ward. And in this video, we're going to be looking at the first two days of the civil battery and defamation trial against Donald Trump that was filed by E. Jean Carroll. And opening arguments started yesterday, and E. Jean Carroll's lawyer came out strong, accusing Trump of sexual assault. And the Donald Trump lawyer said what you'd expect, that this is a political witch hunt against Donald Trump and that these are all lies. She's doing it for political reasons, for monetary reasons, and that none of this actually happened. And she's making it all up, reiterating the de defamatory claims that Trump has made against her. But he's allowed to do it because that's his legal defense. This is an official trial now, so they have the right, for the most part, to craft a defense to defend their client. That's part of the law. So he's allowed to say that. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be basically going over what E. Jean Carroll had to say because that's what's going to determine the outcome of trial. I'll talk about how she can win or not at the end of the video, but I want to go over the testimony that she gave today. She actually took the stand uh, on the second day of the trial, and I want to go over some quotes here of what she had to say, and then we'll talk about who's likely to win, who's likely to not win, what are the main legal questions that the jury's going to be looking at, okay? So let's get started. Oh, by the way, before I start, there's going to be some disturbing details about sexual assault that she claims she suffered from Donald Trump. So there's going to be some disturbing imagery in this video. So be warned if you're not into that stuff, if you can't handle that stuff, this might not be a comfortable video for you. But with that being said, we have to go over it because it's part of the case. So I'm not going to censor anything. It's going to be brutal. But nevertheless, that's reality. Okay, so let's get started. Quote, I'm here because Donald Trump raped me. And when I wrote about it, he said it didn't happen. Carol began her testimony by declaring, he lied and shattered my reputation, and I'm here to try to get my life back. Narrating the alleged sexual assault to the jury with graphic precision, Carol said, quote, he pulled down my tights and his hands, his fingers went into my vagina, which was extremely painful. She spared no details, telling the jurors that Trump curved his fingers inside of her. I read this once before, so I'm kind of over the shock factor, but nevertheless, that's disgusting. That goes without saying, quote, as I'm sitting here today, I'm, I still feel it. She said, asked what happened next. Carol replied, then he inserted his penis. Being able to get my day in court finally is everything to me, she said. I'm so happy. Carol then snapped herself back into control. She had an emotional moment. I'm going to get myself together here. I'm in court. This is my moment. I'm not going to sit here and cry and waste everybody's time. The remark was emblematic of Carol's testimony about the difference between her public and private personas. Carol told the jurors that publicly she was known as the Ask E. Jean Answer Lady, which was from her column back in the day. That's how people in New York knew her. A temperament that she says was instilled in her by her Indiana upbringing in the post-World War II generation. The other persona, she testified, silently harbored a secret for decades and the trauma that went with it. Then, inspired by the Me Too movement, she says she broke her silence, talking about her assault at the hands of Donald Trump. Carol told jurors there were many reasons she waited so long to step forward. Among them, she said, Trump had a chummy relationship with ex-Fox News CEO Roger Ailes, who owned another network that hosted her show. She said her friend, local TV anchorwoman Carol Martin, warned her, quote, he has 200 lawyers, he will bury you, and quote, above all, however, she said, were her feelings of guilt and shame for having walked into the Bergdorf store where the assault happened in the first place. I've gone over the details of the alleged assault um, by Donald Trump. I covered that in the original video where I went over her lawsuit. You can watch that video over here. But by now, everybody knows what this is about. This is a battery and defamation lawsuit. The battery is for the sexual assault and the defamation is for the lies that he told about E. Jean Carroll after she came forward. Okay, so there are two civil claims here, defamation and battery, okay? Uh, as far as this anchor woman, and this is something I really want to cover here, this anchor woman, Carol Martin's an idiot. You should never listen to any of these people who tell you, oh, he has 200 lawyers, so he'll bury you. That means nothing. 
Okay. If you don't have a valid legal argument, you can have a thousand lawyers. You can have the most expensive lawyer in the universe and it's not going to help you. Did having expensive lawyers help Gillian Maxwell? What? Oh no, she's in prison for 20 years. The Justice Department prosecutors who prosecuted Gillian Maxwell get paid somewhere between $70,000 to $100,000. You don't get paid that much as a prosecutor, especially as an assistant U.S. attorney. The U.S. attorneys get paid more, but assistant U.S. attorneys and assistant district attorneys get paid very little compared to the education that they have and the, uh, the hard work that they do, right? Uh, but nevertheless, they kicked Gillian Maxwell's lawyer's ass because the law was on their side on all the motions, not just the trial, forget the trial, right? That's for the jury to decide. But on motions in front of the judge, no matter how expensive the lawyer is, if you don't have good legal argument, you're going to lose. So this argument that stupid people always say, oh, he has 200 lawyers, he's so rich. None of that matters. The law is the law. And rich people don't win just because they have a lot of money or lawyers. That's irrelevant. Only legally ignorant morons say stuff like that. I, and I cover that because that was a deterrent. She, had, she was actually convinced that by that stupid argument. Okay? You, you, all you need is a lawyer that knows the law. And it doesn't matter how many lawyers Donald Trump has, he will lose. Watch him get indicted by the Justice Department and get his ass kicked in court and go to prison. Okay? Because the law is on the Justice Department side because Donald Trump is a criminal. Okay. In this case, this is a civil case, but nevertheless, um, the situation is the same. If you have a good case, it doesn't matter how rich or powerful the other side is, they will lose. Okay. Again, Gillian Maxwell's lawyers were highly paid lawyers who are making probably more than $100,000, $200,000 a year in total. Didn't matter. They all lost. Okay. Because Gillian Maxwell didn't have good arguments. And the jury all ultimately voted against her to find her guilty. And to bolster my argument, where the hell is Donald Trump? All right, he's getting indicted. He was just indicted last month by the New York uh, district attorney. Okay, rich people get punished all the time in America. Don't believe this crap about a gap between the rich and the poor in the legal system. It's a bunch of nonsense. Okay, if rich people commit crimes, they will be prosecuted. They'll be indicted and prosecuted and hopefully convicted by a jury if the prosecutors have evidence. Okay, so don't buy into this crap. So I really want to cover that because I hate stupid quotes like this. He has 200 lawyers. He will bury you. No, he won't. So uh, her lawyer went on to ask more questions and she talked about other surrounding details regarding her mindset of deciding to actually bring the case. I'm not going to go over everything here. The basic point is she had her day in court and she got to t tell her story, which I'm which she's obviously happy about. And win or lose, I think she'll be happy about that part. Uh, so let's talk about the winning and losing, okay? Let's talk about what this is all going to come down to. So because of the fact that this is a civil lawsuit and plus she has no physical evidence of any kind to prove that this happened, no photographic evidence, no video evidence, so everything is going to come down to her testimony and whether the jury thinks that she's trustworthy and whatever other witnesses that they're going to put on. I'm not sure of all the witnesses that both sides will put on, but Trump's side, I have no idea who he, he would put on. We'll see. Um, the uh, the plaintiffs are going first, then Donald Trump's side is going to go. Uh, but nevertheless, you can guess what the Donald Trump lawyers are going to ask her. Um, they're going to ask her about her tweets and her political support or hatred towards the Democrats and the Republicans. And Trump's lawyers are basically going to try to make it seem like she's doing this for political reasons just because she doesn't like Donald Trump. That's been their argument in many of their lawsuits. That's the argument of uh, many people who are in legal trouble from the right wing. Oh, conservatives are so hated in America, and that's why this is all happening to us, not because we did anything criminal or wrong, right? The Proud Boys, we talked about them yesterday. Um, so this is the familiar ridiculous defense from the right-wing jackasses but nevertheless this is all going to come down to her testimony like i said if the jury believes her they're most likely going to give her what she's asking for which is to rule in favor of her if the jury believed her on her battery claims that is basically an automatic victory on the defamation too because donald trump basically said that he didn't do anything and that she's a liar and many other insults so the defamation is directly connected to the battery claim so if she wins on the battery claim meaning the jury believes her side and not the Donald Trump side, which is saying we didn't do anything or Donald Trump didn't do anything, then she wins on both. If they don't believe her on the battery claim, then she's going to lose on both. 
Okay, so because it's based on witness testimony, does it make it easier or harder? Well, it depends on the person testifying. You will remember that the Gill and Maxwell trial mostly came down to the testimony of the four girls that the Justice Department had who were victims of Jeffrey Epstein and Gill and Maxwell. And the jury believed, especially Jane, but the other girls as well. And that's why they ruled against Gill and Maxwell. So the jury has to find the witnesses, or in this case, the witness, the main witness here, E. Jean Carroll, credible enough to rule in their favor. And so the Gill and Maxwell case was a criminal case, but nevertheless, the credibility of the witness testimony is the same in a civil or a criminal case. In a criminal case, you can go to prison. Here, uh, if he loses, Donald Trump's side will have to pay a lot of money to E. Jean Carroll for damages, right? For emotional damages, punitive damages, and a whole bunch of other compensatory damages, etc. Um, those damages will also have to be proven, obviously, by the E. Jean Carroll side. It can be a good thing or a bad thing when the trial depends on jury testimony. If you have a really credible witness um, or a victim, then the jury's probably going to vote on your side, okay? And you're probably going to win. If she comes off in her presentation, that's including her words, her emotional responses, her non-verbal communication, all that stuff matters. The jury's watching the witness on the stand and they take all the visual cues and the verbal cues into account to determine whether they think she's lying or not. If she comes off as an honest person, then Donald Trump is screwed, okay? No matter what whiny arguments the uh, Tokopina or whatever his lawyer has, he's going to lose, okay? But if the jury doesn't find her credible, thinks she's exaggerating or comes off as disingenuous on the uh, stand there, then they're going to vote against her. We'll find out exactly what they say. This is probably not going to last very long. She's already testifying and she's the key witness for the plaintiffs. So the trial's probably going to be over by early next week and the jury's going to be deliberating already so we'll see what happens probably next week or the week after we'll know exactly what's going to happen here my guess i actually don't have a guess okay usually i have a prediction but i didn't see her body language and what the jury thought about them so i can't really say and most of the articles i read doesn't say anything about how the jury was responding to her testimony so it's really hard to say exactly what's going to happen in a case like this when it comes basically down to emotion and the credibility of the witnesses it's hard to predict it so i'm not going to offer any prediction all i know is that i believe e Jean carroll more than i believe trump but that doesn't mean that the jury will believe her okay so we're gonna have to see how the jury feels and and at war dear during jury selection the trump side is going to make sure that we have the most apolitical people on the jury pool as possible so they're probably people who don't even know who e Jean carroll is and they're just going to be hearing all this stuff for the first time that's the right kind of jury to have because you want people who are fresh in their mind and can be objective about the case in front of them. Witness testimony is part of the evidence, by the way, okay? If evidence is not just paperwork and financial records and video and and uh, and audio or photos, it's also witness testimony. That's one of the main key forms of evidence, FYI, if anybody didn't know that. So uh, her testimony can be enough to bury Trump if the jury believes her. I'll be doing another update when the jury comes in, but that's all I got to say for this video. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys next time. Peace.